Yo, what is going on guys? Prevised here. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your games filtering filtering enabled compatible. Alright, so I'm not exactly sure what filtering enabled does, like what it actually does behind the scenes. Um, but I know how to use filtering enabled now. Um, like re remote events and stuff, because I've been practicing. And there's not many tutorials out there that shows you how to... Um, use filtering enabled like in certain games but there there are a good few but hopefully maybe I can explain it a little more but anyways if you can if you can if you actually want to know what filtering enabled does you uh you could read this and yeah so what I think it does is by reading this it seems like it so like if an exploiter is in the game and they want to exploit my game well if they try to I don't know try to insert a fire on their head like you know like put fire on their head only the client which is them can see the fire it doesn't change on the whole server um, hopefully that makes sense so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna be teaching you how to make fire on on top of per I'm kinda stuttering here fire on a person's head with filtering enabled on. Yeah, I don't know why I'm stuttering. Ah, man. Okay. So, filtering enabled's off. And I just made this quick code. So, it gets the player. So, this is in a local script inside Starter GY. And also, this game is going to be in the description. It's uncopy locked if you want the code. So, this code gets the player. So, uh, game.players.local player. It's going to get the uh, local player which is the client then it gets the players character so character equals player dot character or player dot character added weight now if it what it's saying is if it doesn't find the character it's gonna wait it's gonna go on to the R which is over here and it's just gonna wait for the character to be added alright then right here we're gonna make a variable called fire and then we with instance dot new it's going to make the fire which is an actual roblox object and then it parents, that's what this comma's for, it's going to parent to the character, which is over here, the variable. Then it's going to wait for child, head, because each character should have an head. Um, so it's, that's going to parent. Now, with filtering enabled off, like it is, whenever, say, two player joins the game, like you... And I just say that you know you listening the viewer, you we join my game. We would both be able to see the fire on top of each's head, each person's head. But if filtering enabled was on, and we join the game, only you could see the fire above your head, not me. I could see mine, but I can't see yours. Same with you. You can see yours, but you can't see mine. We can only see ours. Okay, so. I'm going to be teaching you how to make it on the server and not the client. Like this, it's making it on the the client. But that's what fil that's what filtering it enables. Um, oh, free. Okay. Anyways, you you get it. Hopefully. So in replicated storage, we're going to insert an object, remote event. Okay. We're going to name this show fire. All right. So now we're going to insert a server script inside of server script service. We're going to name this fire just like this local script over here. Okay, and then also we're going to access this remote in event inside of replicated storage. So local rep storage. So replicated storage equals game get service. Well, actually we could just do game dot replicated. Whoops, replicated storage. Wait for child. Um, typos. Wait for child. Show fire. Um, actually, no. Okay. I put replicated storage right here. If we were to just keep it as replicated storage, that variable, we would just want game.replicated storage. But instead, let's actually just make the variable name show fire because we're getting the actual remote. Okay. So we're going to go down here. Show fire. Okay, now, if you're wondering how we do this, well, let me just write some notes, 
at the bottom. Okay, so whenever you're working with fil filtering enabled in remote events, remote events has a function called on server event. Whoops, event. And then another function on client event. Now, whenever you want to fire the remote, you would use there's there's fire server there's fire event I mean sorry 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 no 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 fire client sorry about that oh my god F and there's also fire all clients with an S okay so and then you would put the parentheses after those and then whenever I said f uh, event it's like doing this so like you would have show fire dot on client event show fire I mean show fire on serve event and show fire on client event and then you know connect function you add these parentheses okay so I'm not gonna put the remote name in front okay so on server event has the first parameter of the player on client event doesn't um, on client event is uh, it's just whatever other arguments that you want to send through here. It's not the player, but on server event is always the player. So make sure you always have player as the first argument, and then whatever, and then you can have whatever else like you know whatever other um, arguments. So um, fire server does not have uh, it does not get the player. But fire client always gets the player first. Fire all client does not. Hopefully I'm making sense here. I'm kind of stuttering. I don't know why. I guess this is not the right time to be making a video. Uh, but it has been a while and I'm trying to explain. But I will be making more videos uh, using filtering enabled. Okay. So one more thing about explaining these things right here. Um, so on serve event. I'm gonna write this only used in server scripts on client event only used in local scripts fire server only used in uh, fire server is only used in local scripts fire client only only used in server scripts and firewall clients only used in server scripts all right so this this should explain it so whenever you're using on server events connect function player this is this can only be written in server events with on client event function you know only in local scripts so you can never have this function, the on server event, in a local script, only in server scripts. All right, so that's just a quick note. So I'm just going to do this to kind of separate it. All right, so at the top here, in the local script, we have it inserting the fire inside of our client. Now we want it to be in all, um, on all characters. So we want this to happen on the server. So to make this happen on the server, we're going to do is we're going to take our remote which is show fire and we're going to fire the server Oops. now we're not going to send any th well yeah we don't have to send anything through here because we really don't need to send anything through um, so once okay so copy this line right here that, that I just selected and you can remove that then we're going to go in the fire which is the server script we're going to paste it here now what we need to do is access the remote. So we need to get the remote. So I'm going to copy show fire, put it up here. Okay. And then um then we're going to make on server event. So we're going to take show fire which is our remote dot on server event connect function. Now the first parameter is the player. 
and then we're going to end that function off. So if you were sending something through right here, like uh, just for example, I'm just going to put that. So if you were sending this in, that would be the next parameter right here. So if you wanted to send another thing through, that would be the next. But remember, on with on server event, the parameter is always the player. But we're not sending any anything through, so we're gonna remove those other two things. Okay. So how this okay, how the code's saying it is so it takes the remote, so once the client's added, which is whenever this uh local script runs, it's gonna get the show fire, which is this right here in replicated storage, and then it's gonna take this remote, it's gonna fire the server. Once it fires the server, it's gonna run the the event on serve event, which is which is in our server script. So it's gonna run this and it's gonna make the fire. And then we're gonna insert it, not just in the character. We need to get player dot character, um, or you could have just done like local, local character equals player dot character, and then you can just keep the character right here because we access the player's character. And this should work. And I'm just going to test it. Alrighty, guys. So as you can see, filtering enabled is on. And the fire is on each of our heads. So that's good. That's good. So it worked. So I do plan on... I'm so sorry for stuttering in this tutorial. I guess it's just a bad time to make this video. But I do plan on making more tutorials like this with filtering enabled. And I just learned modules also. So I might start making some module tutorials. And maybe a mini game tutorial. And if you're watching this and you also watched my, uh, what's that game? The, the murder game? Yeah, the murder game. Uh, those videos, I don't know if they're going to continue because the scripting was kind of bad. And I just, so in that tutor in those tutorials, I was using tables and I'm not, a, I'm not an expert with tables. So I might redo the whole tutorial but I might turn it into a mini games tutorial but I'm not going to be using t I'm not going to be using tables I'll be using like some boolean values and or maybe some in-game tag that gets inserted into the character or something I'm not going to be using tables anymore so I hope you guys enjoyed peace